to my channel, Coin Lady, and thank you for returning. Now I'm curious, what gives XRP its high sell pressure? You may have noticed that XRP has been losing value recently, even though we received a favorable ruling only a few days ago. However, you guys should know that this is typical. Do not anticipate the price to simply, you know, keep going up and up and up at this period in time, because we are still in the anticipated market. Now that we know for sure, the best case scenario is. With the altcoin rally and Bitcoin's new all-time highs in the works, XRP will have a clear path to follow in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. If you look at XRP right now, you can see that we are sitting above that trend line, which we were dangerously moving below for the past few months. I went down, then back up, and down again as the price of Bitcoin went down. Currently, we are sitting at a quite high point, approximately 58 cents, which is significantly higher than the base of this trend line. Those are the main points I wanted to make regarding the sell pressure. Trends are strong, that's just the market, according to Jay Grissom, who is here presenting his three thoughts. Therefore, isn't that the point? Like other cryptocurrencies, XRP can rise and fall with the market. A large number of resentful retail XRP holders are giving in to holder weariness and selling their holdings. While it may not happen often, the XRP rich list serves as an example of how this might happen in any market. Eventually, a lot of smaller accounts will just give up and sell. If you've been keeping tabs on the XRP wealthy list, you might have seen that Jay has discovered a trend. Personally, I haven't paid much attention to that. It seems like there are some people in the crypto community who eventually say, I'm done with this, even if I believe XRP holders to be among the strongest. The headache is over now. The tension and strain have had enough of me. He adds that thirdly, there are many well-established companies in the industry who would like to keep acting as the intermediary that XRPL eliminates. Here we have an unusual rationale involving an individual who stands to lose something should XRP emerge victorious. On a side point, he claims that the forces acting against any asset are universal. Consider Amazon, then. Traditional retail fighting was commonplace at Tesla. In addition to the entire cryptocurrency sector, Ripple also has the leading members of the correspondent banking ecosystem and a whole automotive industry full of well-established manufacturers. Thus, it is clear that change is unavoidable. That won't happen. No one ever promised that this would be an easy journey. I suppose in the end, we have to remind ourselves that there is a great deal of uncertainty, stress, and pressure that causes the crypto market to rise and fall. Plus, we're going to get a lot of benefits for all the trouble we've gone through. Another good reason to have a diverse portfolio is this. As of the time of this recording, I believe you can still find a steal of a deal on those 18 altcoins on Patreon.com, and I do believe they will perform well once we see that banana zone over the next, what, 12 to 16 months. There are some real gems in there, and I want you to know about them. If you would want to follow my trading journey this time around, it's only $5 a month. I wanted to thank Jay for publishing that. Now I also learned about this via smoke. Alright, Ripple is the only cryptocurrency business that has been listed twice for having partnerships with relevant financial infrastructures and funding from major companies. It came from a report. It is unclear to me from where this report originated. Although I don't believe he specifically mentioned it, the firm and investing approach are detailed here. And the description, gentlemen, ripples through Santander, listed on the investment side, they're worth $32 million. On the other hand, their collaboration with Earthport through Fighter Bank is visible on the partnership side as well. Additionally, Ripple's real-time payment system has drawn in other partners. You have to consider the lineup for a company that is attempting to penetrate the sector in different methods, as pointed out by VAL here. Alright, Chris Larson was a co-founder of Alone before. He also opened the door for the P2P economy to thrive. Jed McCaleb, founder of eDonkey and the pioneering Bitcoin exchange, Mt. Gox, was also the chief technology officer. After that, there's the venture capital money, alright? Notable backers included Anderson Horowitz, Ben Horowitz, Lightspeed Venture Partners, Founders Fund, PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel, 
and Google Ventures. In addition to our A-list roster, we have two premier software developers in David Schwartz and Arthur Brito. This project is a sure bet to be successful, you guys. I believe that Ripple and XRP will be the dominant players in the industry in the next years if you've been watching. The channel or other channels that might explore conspiracies. It is true that Tyler Winklevoss did publish this. Alright, the pertinent excerpt, Harris hasn't publicly stated her stance on cryptocurrency yet, thus supposedly, there are no official. So yet, I don't think any official stances have been announced. According to Cameron Winklevoss, Harris once again failed to show up for the most recent crypto roundtable. Keep calm, though, she's deeply into cryptocurrency. It clicks with her. Things are moving along. Crypto executives meet with White House officials for a virtual round table to air issues about policies, but we don't have any evidence to back this up just yet. This was a major occurrence. Actually, Chad Steiner posted this. I believe this happened the day following the Ripple verdict. Members of the White House staff and advisors to Vice President Kamala Harris were on a Zoom conference when crypto executives raised their worries. Attendees included executives from Uniswap, Kraken, Coinbase, and Ripple. An individual who was present on Thursday's Zoom call claims that the White House advisors who had previously met with a group consisting of crypto industry executives, including Ripple, Kraken, Coinbase, and others, did not address any policy changes with the group, and that this was in spite of the fact that the executives had voiced concerns about the administration's policies. Tabitha is here questioning, is this real, as a White House official, did not immediately respond to a request for comment. According to Chad, it's worth mentioning that even Cointelegraph noticed this. White House officials and industry leaders had a conversation about cryptocurrency policy. Once again, this occurred the day following the Ripple verdict, and I seriously doubt that it was a coincidence. Just what else are they stating from this level? Financial sector heavy hitters reportedly met on August 8 to plot a course correction for the Biden administration's crypto policies in the wake of President Joe Biden's 2025 term end and the launch of Harris's campaign. Now that Joe Biden has decided to stand aside, the dynamic is a little altered. Next in line is Harris. So, many people are questioning, okay, how is this going to change? This is particularly true among Democrats. Will anything change? The CEOs in the cryptocurrency industry allegedly lobbied the Biden administration to clarify regulations around digital assets, with hints of Gary Gensler's dismissal from the SEC being dropped. There has been much criticism of Gensler's SEC for its enforcement proceedings against cryptocurrency companies that do not appear to have a clear road to operate legally in the US. I'm guessing that if Harris takes over, they'll either stick with the status quo, which is the party line B, or make some changes to hide their continued support for the banking sector. On the other hand, I don't see her making a total about-face and treating cryptocurrency the same way, like the Trump campaign. Who knows? It's all up in the air. I suppose D is also floating the idea that they will announce a whole policy change regarding cryptocurrency, but then they will do nothing more than lie about it. Seems like there's yet another crypto party schism on the fourth choice. Presumably, neither Tim Waltz, who is running against Harris, nor Vice President Harris herself have hinted that they plan to center their campaign around cryptocurrency. Donald Trump, the Republican candidate, on the other hand, said that his campaign would take cryptocurrency donations. All you need to know is that he opposed establishing a US CBDC and intended to fire Gary Gensler if re-elected. The good news is that there are Americans out there who grasp the gravity of the situation and refuse to submit to a world where they are effectively reprogrammed and ruled by foreign powers. My video's viewers have my gratitude. Please let me know what you think of my video. When you're done, hit that subscribe button and let me know what you think.